This is Map 141, Section 11.2. We are doing ellipses uh, today. So we've had this locus of point definition uh, for circle. You know, the, all the points that are equidistant from a given point. Uh, we have a, a similar definition for an ellipse. And let me get it, get it written up. And here it is. An ellipse is the set of points, two-dimensional, uh, the sum of whose distance from two fixed points, F1 and F2, is a constant. And this F1 and F2, uh, these are called foci. Foci is plural. One of them would be a focus. All right, so we have uh, foci, plural, focus, singular. So what does this mean? It means if, if I have two points, like F1 and F2, and uh, I'm going to have some ellipse. Ellipse looks like a squish circle. This distance plus this distance, distance one plus distance two, is always the same, no matter what point I pick. So like if I point this point right here, this distance plus that distance would also be the uh, that's that same. So whatever these d1 plus d2 is a constant, is always the same number uh, for a given ellipse. All right, so I have, uh, I want to talk about that a little bit more technology in my day all we needed to have fun was a stick and a piece of string maybe some thumbtacks all right um i want to think about some things that we know um well you know how to make a circle you know you you fix the center and then you just make the distance equal all the way around with it that's called the locus of points definition it's the collection of points that are equidistant from a given point that's a circle you know you know how to do that now i'm going to build on that um, instead of having a center, I'm going to have what I'm going to call two foci, or their, their focuses. It's the plural of focus, foci. So I'm going to have two foci. I'm going to have a string then and put it around it like this. And what I'm going to make is an ellipse. And so if you'll notice, on this ellipse, I'll just say it while I'm drawing it, every point, the sum of the distance from any point on here to the fo two foci are the same. So in other words, if I go this plus this, that's a constant, right? This is a constant width, that's a constant width. Any point that's along here, this length plus that length always has to equal the same amount. That's a locus of point definition for an ellipse. And uh, ellipses are interesting. You know, if I, if I spread this out a little bit, if I make it wider, uh, you can hopefully think about what my ellipse is gonna look like. It's gonna be flatter. like that and then as I as I make this narrower as I make as these points come closer and closer together it they're it's more like they're at the same point right so what will happen is my ellipse becomes less squish and it becomes looking more and more like a circle so again these are called foci we could call this focus one and focus two um, now on an ellipse some some definitions here let me draw another ellipse real quick here. Two foci. I'm going to draw the collection of points, uh, the sum of whose distances are equidistant from the foci, from each focus. Now let's think about some pieces here. This ellipse, it has a center here. That center is, is right halfway between the two foci, just like it's halfway between those two vertices and these ones as well. Um, Remember from last week, this distance across here from the center to the widest parts, that's called the major axis. That's the whole thing. And then half of it is called the major radius. And then this is the minor axis. And then that distance right there is called the minor radius. Right, just from the center to the edge. So we have a minor radius and a major. Let's let's mess around with the equations a little bit. You know, it looks a little bit like a like a squish circle. So I know that I could have a circle circle like x squared plus nine, y squared equals nine, 
right? That just has a center at zero, zero, and a radius of three, right? The square root of that, spin it around. Um, one thing I want you to think about, I could divide everything here by nine. So I could rewrite this equation as x squared over nine plus y squared over nine, and nine divided by nine is one, is equal to one. Those are the same equation, and that will also give me a, um, a circle. So let me look at this on Desmos. So I'm going to have uh, x squared over 9 plus y squared over 9 equals 1. There it is, circle with a radius of 3. So now here's what I want to do. Notice like from my center, I'm offset 3 in this direction, in the x direction, and I'm offset 3 in this direction, in the y direction. I'm going to mess with this a little bit. Um, so I think I'm, instead of a 9 under the y, I'm going to make that a 16. And notice what happens. I still have my center, 0, 0. But, and, and these points are called the, the vertices. Each one is a vertex of the, of the, um, of the ellipse. It's where it changes direction. Um, notice that like in my x direction, I'm offset by 3, which is the square root of 9. And in the y direction, I'm offset by 4, which is the square root of 16. Right, so um, like let's say that this was a 16 and this was a four, whoops, <laughs> a four. In the y direction, I'm offset by two, offset like off the center. And in the x direction, square root of 16 is four. I'm offset by that in that direction. So with that in mind, I have kind of this general equation I'm adding them together. It's equal to 1. And then I could say, like, this is a squared under the x, and this is b squared under the y. So essentially what I have then is uh, I have my center. Right, My center is going to be right between the two foci. Notice I haven't talked about how to find the, the foci yet. It's my center. And then in the a, uh, I'm sorry, in the y direction it should be b, because b is under y plus and minus it, and then a in the x direction. And notice what that does is that kind of makes like, not kind of, but you can make a rectangle out of those extremes. You just come straight up and down and straight left and right. And that framing that, kind of drawing that, helps you, uh, helps me at least, draw a decent ellipse. And notice sometimes a is larger than b, sometimes b is larger than a, right? So it could be that um, b is long. And these, these, uh, these b and a are arbitrary values, right? I mean, and what I mean by that is I, I'm just calling them a and b so I can have something to, to, to say about it. I'm not saying which one is necessarily bigger than the other. I'm just saying that but I am saying that A is an offset in the x direction and B is offset in the y direction. So here's some possible um, shapes for it. All right, and uh, let's see, we have the center and then we have these extremes, which are called, uh, each of them are called a vertex, uh, multiple of a vertex's vertice, vertices. All right, so now I want to think about how we can find those actual, those foci, each of those focus. Notice they're not on here at all. But in this one that's uh, kind of fatter length, uh, lengthwise, they'll be that way. And in this one that's fatter up and down, they'd be that direction. The, the foci are always going to lie along um, what's called the major axis. So here's another video that I want you to check. We're going to go back to the, to the string in the box. What I want to do is think about some connection between those two and this distance from the center to the foci. It's equidistant, so whatever direction um, I go doesn't matter. So I have this major radius here. I have this distance from the center to the to the one of the foci. I'm going to call that C. So you know what I think I'll do here is I'll make a right triangle. And now if I knew how long this was, I could find C using the Pythagorean theorem. 
So how long is that? Well, what's super convenient is take a look at this. Um, that distance from the center to there is my, my minor radius. Notice that this distance from here to here is basically half of this, right? Like, and this little section that's right here, um, sorry, yeah, this little section that's right here that's doubled up takes up that distance right there. So if I go like this, I hope you can see that that distance is equivalent to that distance. Here's why. If I'm straight up, I have an equilateral triangle. So this side equals that side. And if I go from here to here, this distance, I'm not counting this part that connects these two. I'm just counting from here to here, then to the edge, and then back to that focus. So notice that that, if that distance right there is that distance right there. So this whole distance is the major axis. So that must be the major axis. So half of it would be the, the major radius. So this distance right here is the major radius there, that distance right there. So to find this distance, this C distance right here, um, I'll just call this A and call this B for now. I know it's different than what we're used to for Pythagorean theorem. In this case, B is the um, hypotenuse, but I know that A squared plus C squared equals B squared, which means that if I know the minor radius and the major radius, subtract C, uh, let me think about this. Subtract A from both sides. In other words, this distance is the major radius squared minus the minor radius squared. So if I want to know how it is from how far it is from a focus to the set midpoint. I can go major radius squared minus minor radius squared because it's back right here. <laughs> and that's the end. Great. So now what we can do is we can add a little bit of information to here. And that's that if I have these foci here and here, that distance is C. Again, my foci will always lie along the major axis, um, the longest right? The widest part like that. And it will always, um, that distance will be C. And I could add then one thing to this relationship. And that's basically that um, C squared is A squared minus B squared. And if I say that, I'm, I'm assuming that um, A is larger than B. Technically, it's major, um, the major radius squared minus the minor minor radius squared but what we can do is we can just kind of go absolute value of that right so it's always positive so we can so we can square root it great so now i have some pieces here and i can actually do some sketches so if i had an equation that looked like uh, uh, x squared over 16 plus y squared over 9 equals 1 pretty easy for me to sketch that i know my center is at zero zero um, in the x directions, this 16 is a 4 squared. So in the x direction, I'm going to go left 4 and right 4. And if I had graph paper, I'd count it out, but I'm just going to do that. And I know what these points are. Since that's a change in the x direction, this is at 0, 0, it's plus 4 to the x in that direction. And it's minus 4 to the x uh, to the left. And then uh, 9 squared is... I'm sorry, the square root of 9 is 3, 3 is 3 squared is 9, so in the y direction I'm going to go 3, so this would be the point up 3, so 0, 3, add 3 to the y part, down 3, maybe move it a little bit up since I don't have grid paper. And I always like to draw the rectangle because that helps me, helps me draw the box a little bit, and I'll try and draw the ellipse uh, as as good as I can and then now let me try and figure out where the um, where the foci would be at so I know that c squared is 
a squared minus b squared. Notice this relationship for the foci. This operator is the opposite operator than what's going on in the equation. Now, that'll actually generalize for us in this unit. So uh, a squared is 16. Uh, 16 minus 9, that's equal to c squared. So 16 minus 9 is uh, 7. So c is the square root of 7. Uh, square root of 7 is less than 4 right because 4 squared is 16 so I'm, I'm going to go in the major axis direction and my first my first uh, foci right there is at square root of 7 I'm adding it to the x and this one's negative and there is you know a decent sketch of my uh, of my ellipse I'm going to erase a little bit and do some more sketches. So we'll look at an equation that has uh, 25x squared plus 4y squared uh, equals 100. Now notice that's not in this, in this form right here. So what I'm going to do is get it in that form. I'm going to, I want this to be equal to 1, so I'm going to divide everything by 100. And 25 over 100, that's going to leave me a, a 4 down there. 4 over 100, that, that reduces to 1 over 25, and that's 1. And so then now it's in my, in my form. I'm going to sketch it, and I'm going to find the foci. So I've got my 0, 0. This is 2 squared. This is 5 squared. So there's my offset. In the x direction, it goes over 2. So I'll just 2, 1, 2. Just kind of eyeball it. If I was using graph paper, it'd be a little easier, but I'm not. That's okay, because I just want to sketch it. I don't really... I'm just going to label the points. Up 5, down 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, probably there, which would be 5 added to the y part. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, about 5 subtracted from the y part. And again, I'm going to draw my rectangle... Um, and I'm actually doing that because it's it's a little future thinking. Um, the rectangle is going to help me differentiate a couple of things a little bit later on. Draw it as best I can. Whew. Draw it as best as I do. Um, now I'll find the focus. Remember that c squared is a squared minus b squared. So 25 minus 4. Notice those are already squared for me. So I don't really have to do too much work. Uh, c is... C squared is 21, so C is the square root of 21. And now notice that my major axis is in the Y direction, because that number is larger. So that my foci will lay along that. So this would be um, up square root of 21. And this would be down that, so it would be 0 minus square root of 21. All right, uh, I'm going to race again and uh, get, some, get some more examples. All right, uh, two more for me to check out. I want to sketch a graph of each of these and also uh, find the foci. So I'm going to divide everything by 12 here. So you got x squared over 3 plus y squared over 4 equals 1. So uh, 4 is 2 squared. 3 is the square root of 3 squared. So uh, my center is going to be at 0, 0. Notice this is the larger one, y. So that's that's my foci will lay along that. Up and down 2, so add 2 to y, subtract 2 from y. And then root 3, so add root 3 to x, subtract root 3 from x. Again, I like to draw my rectangle. It just kind of frames it well for me. Boop, boop. There's my sketch. And I know that my, my focus then, c squared is uh, a squared minus b squared. And I just like to think of a as the larger one. So 4 minus 3. Notice they're already squared, right? This is my a value. This is my b value. So c squared is 1. So c is 1. So that means... 
the folks again the folks i remember are along the major axis that's the the larger the larger kind of offset so it goes up one so add one to y from the center down one subtract one from y from the center great uh similar idea here uh except it's already equal to one like i don't have anything to divide out so there's a really clever i think sleight of hand here which is to rewrite this as x squared over one ninth uh, plus y squared over one fourth equals one multiplying by nine is the same as dividing by one ninth right like if i had x squared over one ninth that's the same as x squared divided by one ninth which is the same as x squared times nine nine x so if it's already equal to one and you don't have these as fractions you can rewrite them as divided by the reciprocal of those uh, coefficients it's a super clever little trick and by trick i mean relationship <laughs> all right so it looks like a uh, square root of that is one third square root of that is one half so i have some point zero zero i'm going over a third in both directions in the x direction and since I'm not on red paper, I can make that however big I want. So add one third to x, subtract one third from x, and then up down a half. So um, a half is bigger than a third. So it's actually going to go this way, zero a half, zero negative a half, boop, draw my rectangle. Catch. And now um, this is larger than this. So it's in the y direction for my for my foci. C squared is a squared minus b squared. So one fourth minus one ninth. Whew. That's nine thirty sixths minus four thirty sixths, which is five thirty sixths. Fun fraction work. Square root that, I get square root of 5 over 6. So I'm going to go up. Square root of 5 over 6. And I'm going to go down. So negative square root of 5 over 6. Right? Just add it to y, subtract it from y. Now next I want to show you a couple of uh, ellipses. And we'll try to write an equation for it. So we'll try and go the opposite direction. You get the picture, and then you try to come up with the equation for it. So here's our first one. Um, we can see our centers at 0, 0, right there. And it looks like we're offset 6 in the, uh, I can see that from that point, in the x direction, and 3 in the y direction. So uh, it looks like my equation should be uh, x squared... I know it's going to be x squared over something plus y squared over something equals 1. x squared over that version squared, so 6 squared, so that would be a 36. And y squared over 3 squared, so that would be a 9. And there's my equation for that one right there. All right, here's my, here's my next one. So I know it's going to be um, x squared... over something plus y squared over something equals 1. And it looks like the x is offset by 6. So that's a 36. Now this is the focus. This is this is one of the foci. So I know that this c value here is 3, right? Because it's over 3. And uh, this distance looks longer than... Well, it doesn't even have to look longer. Um, the focus is along that axis, so that is my that's my that's my major radius right there. The whole thing's my major axis. So that means that um, remember c squared equals a squared minus b squared. Like this is what I'm trying to find that b squared, the thing that if I square root it, it gives me that distance. Um, but I know c is three, so three squared equals a squared. Now remember this 36 is a squared, so I don't need to square that. That's a 36 minus b squared. And so now I just need to solve that. So I'm going to add b squared to both sides. 
I'm going to subtract 9 from both sides. 36 minus 9 is 27. So it looks like b squared is 27. Now I could square root it, but I'm just going to have to square it again, right? I'm looking for b squared. So 27. So remember, uh, in, in general, we have x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1. And now uh, a can be bigger than b, b can be bigger than a. It's arbitrary. We know that the foci, to find the, the foci, we go the bigger one minus the smaller one. Or you can just say the absolute value of that subtraction. And in general, we have some center. We have some foci depending on uh, if they're in the x direction, if a is bigger than b. They're in the y direction if it's smaller. We know that that distance is c. And we also know that it goes out to this distance right here is a, the thing that's under the x. This distance right here is b, the thing, well, square it, and it's the thing that's under y. All right, uh, there's our generalization for ellipses. Get some practice in and uh, message me with any questions that you have.